Elon Musk's SpaceX is revolutionizing connectivity and drastically reducing the cost of accessing space with a game-changing vision. In a remarkable feat, 80% of SpaceX's rocket launches are dedicated to support their own Starlink project, a pioneering satellite internet service designed to deliver high-speed broadband worldwide. Since its inception in 2019, Starlink has deployed an impressive 6,200 satellites, now providing high-speed internet to over 3 million subscribers. This ambitious project is bridging the digital divide, bringing connectivity to remote and underserved regions like never before. But the company isn't stopping there. In this video, we'll dive into the latest cutting-edge advancements of Starlink's new compact ground-based receiver dishes and the introduction of V2 Mini satellites, which are actually much larger and more powerful than previous designs, and capable of defending themselves against massive solar storms. Stay tuned as we explore these groundbreaking innovations shaping the future of global connectivity. Starlink functions by deploying a constellation of low Earth orbit satellites that work in tandem to provide global internet coverage. Unlike traditional geostationary satellites that orbit at approximately 35,000 kilometers above the Earth, Starlink satellites orbit at much lower altitudes, around 550 kilometers. This proximity to Earth's surface significantly reduces latency, resulting in faster data transmission speeds, as low as 25 milliseconds. Elon Musk is pushing to get the latency even lower, recently posting even better results at 23 millisecond latency with 100 megabits per second download speeds. But he's challenged the Starlink team with the goal of reducing average latency below 20 milliseconds, which would be highly competitive with ground-based internet. Each Starlink satellite is equipped with multiple high-throughput antennas and a single solar array for power. They communicate with user terminals, or Starlink dishes, on the ground, using the KU band, which is in the 12 to 18 gigahertz range, and KA band at 27 to 40 gigahertz frequencies. With higher frequencies, such as those offered by the KA band, Starlink achieves higher data transfer rates due to its greater bandwidth. They can also employ a technique to use focused spot beams to improve signal quality and boost coverage and capacity through frequency reuse. However, higher frequencies are more susceptible to weather-related issues like rain fade. On the other hand, KU band, while having lower data transfer rates, is less affected by atmospheric conditions and generally features larger, more expensive, but more robust antennas. The satellites themselves are also designed to ensure seamless coverage as one satellite moves out of range and another moves into position. When a user sends a request through the Starlink dish on the ground, it's transmitted to the nearest satellite overhead. From there, the data is actually downlinked back to one of the many ground stations strategically located around the world. These ground stations are connected to the terrestrial internet infrastructure. However, Starlink launched a significant upgrade, introducing laser links or optical inter-satellite links. These laser links allow satellites to communicate with each other directly through beams of light, enabling data transfer at the speed of light in a vacuum, which is about 50% faster than even the speed of light in a fiber optic cable. Previously, Starlink relied heavily on these ground stations to route data between satellites and the internet. Laser links reduced this dependency for additional infrastructure, allowing satellites to transfer data between themselves over long distances without needing to downlink to Earth. This improvement reduces latency, enhances network efficiency, and provides coverage in areas where ground stations are not even feasible such as over oceans or in polar regions. While Starlink first launched laser links in 2021, it's taken a few years for these to become prevalent and effective. As of now, Starlink has over 10,000 lasers in their constellation. But one of Starlink's more recent innovations, which is becoming a larger and more meaningful part of their constellation, is the introduction of V2 mini satellites. 
Despite the name, they're not that small in the least. Previous starlings weighed roughly 260 kilograms, or 573 pounds, but the V2 minis weigh 800 kilograms, or 1,764 pounds. These next-generation satellites are pivotal for Starlink, featuring advanced propulsion systems, higher data throughput, and expanded frequency bands. Starlink was originally planning a V2 large satellite that weighs 2,000 kilograms, or 4,400 pounds, but this could only be launched by SpaceX's Starship. Because Starship was delayed, the V2 Mini was created, essentially to contain many of the benefits of the full-size satellites, but they can be launched by the existing Falcon 9 rocket. V2 Mini satellites are equipped with more advanced phased array antennas and make use of the E-band frequency range for backhaul. This is an even higher frequency, ranging between 71 and 76 gigahertz from space to Earth, and 81 to 86 gigahertz from Earth to space. This spectrum allows for much faster data rates between satellite and ground station in order to reduce network congestion. At the beginning of this year, Starlink's laser system was transporting 42 petabytes of data per day through space, and so the new upgrades allow for four times more capacity per satellite. The V2 mini satellites have also upgraded their electrical propulsion ion thrusters from using krypton, one of the rarest gases at just one part per million in the atmosphere, to an argon-fueled hull thruster, a gas which makes up a much larger 1% of the air we breathe. This switch not only significantly reduces costs due to argon's abundance, but also enhances performance. The new argon thrusters offer 2.4 times more thrust and 1.5 times greater specific impulse, or fuel efficiency, compared to the Krypton thrusters used in the first generation Starlink satellites. This makes the V2 mini satellite both more powerful and cost effective, and it's already played an important role during the extreme solar storm experience this past May. Typical solar storms can easily disrupt communications and even take out satellites completely. Yet Starlink reported less than one minute of disruption with no satellites lost during May's unprecedented G5 solar storm. These geomagnetic storms can disrupt satellite communications by releasing radiation that causes radio signals to fluctuate and take unpredictable paths, and by temporarily increasing atmospheric density, which increases drag on the satellites. During the recent storm, Starlink satellites faced up to five times more drag than usual, according to SpaceX. However, their robust design and advanced collision avoidance systems allow them to manage these effects. SpaceX used the satellite's ion thrusters to adjust their position and based on past experience with geomagnetic storms, took additional measures to reduce drag by modifying the satellite's frontal profiles all while maintaining service to customers. That's ultimately at the heart of Starlink's mission, which is providing robust, high-speed, low-latency connectivity across the globe. And that's also where their new compact ground receiver comes into play, the Starlink Mini. This Mini is about the size of a standard sheet of paper and can fit into a backpack for internet on the go. Elon Musk believes that this product will change the world. It enables affordable and transportable satellite internet anywhere in the world and it's only made possible by Starlink's advances in space as their new satellites have powerful antennas and capacity to support handling vast amounts of data from widespread user terminals simultaneously. The user terminal or Starlink dish is a phased array antenna with no moving parts that can electronically steer its beam to track satellites passing overhead. SpaceX has focused on miniaturizing its receiver technology to better serve remote and mobile users. This new, smaller receiver retains the functionality of larger models while being more convenient for travel, weighing only 2.5 pounds. It features Starlink's simplified, easy-to-deploy design, just plug it in and point it at the sky. But for the first time, it's small enough to be easily carried around. The phased array technology has also gotten better. 
which eliminates the need for an electronic motor to assist in pointing directly at satellites. Additionally, and for the first time, SpaceX has integrated Wi-Fi directly into the Starlink dish, removing the need for a separate router that previous models required. This advancement enhances efficiency and cost-effectiveness, especially since the company initially sold larger dishes at a significant loss to attract subscribers. Priced at $599 plus a monthly service fee, this new model represents a significant step in making high-speed internet more accessible, and it's preparing to go out to customers right now. As Starlink continues to scale, the price is expected to decrease further, making it even more affordable over time. Elon Musk sees this as a game changer, making it easier than ever to connect rural and mobile users to high-speed internet at a reasonable cost, compared to the alternative of no internet or poor connections. Starlink's cutting-edge approach to satellite internet promises to close the connectivity gap and bring high-speed internet to every part of the globe. The V2 mini satellites with space lasers and argon thrusters mark significant milestones in SpaceX's relentless mission to reduce cost and scale global connectivity. The new mini user terminal is a game changer offering a practical and efficient solution for connecting anyone anywhere to the internet. And these advancements are truly revolutionizing global access to the digital world. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out our previous Starlink video. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And thank you guys so much for watching.